Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics <coughs> excuse me, that may be of interest to libraries. Uh, we brought this, broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be available later on in our show archives for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of those show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Um, for um, We do a, a, a variety of things around the show. We do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. Um, we do shows for public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives. Really, our only criteria is that it is something to do with libraries. Uh, we bring in guest speakers uh, from all over the country, but we also have um, speakers from the Library Commission that present about things that we're doing here or things that we're involved in. And that's what we are doing this morning. Today, we are talking about the Nebraska Letters About Literature contest. And with us is Tessa Terry, our communications coordinator here at the Library Commission. Good morning, Tessa. And Sally Snyder, who is our coordinator of youth and um, children's and young adult services. And also a judge on this, I believe. Yes, all right, I knew it. <laughs> um, and so I'm just gonna hand it over to you, uh, Tessa and Sally, to tell us all about uh, the program and what we're doing this year. Yeah. So like Krista said, my name is Tessa Terry and I'm the communications coordinator here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And one of my jobs is to help organize some of the Nebraska Center for the Book programs that we help sponsor as the Library Commission. And one of those programs is the Letters About Literature Contest. And I've been helping um, organize this for a few years now, and especially since we went from it being a national contest to a state-run contest, I had a much bigger role in how we organize and facilitate the contest. So that's why I'm here to talk to you today. Yes. Um, so do you want to give them an overview about kind of why you're here to talk to us? I'm here because I've been a judge, one of the judges for the Letters About Literature for a number of years, and I don't even know how long I've been involved in it, but I started when it was a national contest, and I'll talk a little bit later on about the differences between then and now, because um, I think it's great now, but that's my opinion, uh, as far as a judge goes, and uh, about reading the letters, and, and um, there's always more than one person who's deciding this. I'm not the only one for this age group. There's another person, and we'll get into that as we go along, but um, it's, uh, it's kind of, daunting to read the letters and decide who's the winner. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of responsibility on you. Okay, let's see if I can move this along. Okay, so if you aren't familiar with it, our Letters About Literature contest is a statewide reading program and a writing contest. It is for young readers, grades four through 12. So any school age children, fourth grade and up pretty much. They, the goal of the contest is to get kids to really do some introspection and write a personal letter to an author about why a book has affected their life or changed the way they think about the world or um, yeah, just how it's affected them. And so, we do really like to make sure people know this is not a book report contest. We don't need a synopsis of the book in your letter. It is about really getting kids to do what we call reflective writing. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that too. So once again, they must explain how the author's work changed the student's view of the world. Now, we separate it out so that fourth graders aren't competing against 12th graders. So we have three grade levels. We have level one, which is grades four through six. We have level two, which is seven through eight. And then level three is high school, ninth through 12th. And obviously, 
students can submit letters even if they're not in a public school. We have parochial schools that submit letters. We have kids that are homeschooled that submit letters. So it doesn't have to just be a school um, activity, but it, we have um, kids that do this outside of school as extra credit or as a writing group. So it doesn't have to be school sponsored, but a lot of times it is spearheaded by a teacher or a librarian who's kind of making this happen in their school or community. <clears throat> but um, public libraries can do this as well if the school. Um, oh yeah. Doing it. This is even though we talk about it being students and 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 kids in those certain grade levels that, that it's based on. Um, it doesn't have to be coming from the school. The a li the library public, public public library can um, initiate the program and and um, help with running it either on their own or uh, even in conjunction, which is great. We love partnerships um, with yeah. their school. Yeah. Get, Some reach public out to libraries as possible in the most locations. Yeah. Some public libraries have a writing workshop yeah. for a group of you know age group or whatever of kids and this is something that they could aim toward if they wanted to as a, a project for the kids to think about doing mm -hmm. uh, giving them the option but not you know usually public libraries don't force kids to do things no yeah. but a lot of public libraries around the state have teen groups they have after school programs for students um head start programs run out of the library so this is a great program to integrate into something you're already doing with school age kids. Mm -hmm. And then our submission deadline, it's changed last year, so we're keeping it um, the same as last year. It's October 1st through December 31st. So you have all of October, November, and December to submit your letters to us. So we like to go over a little bit about what the Center for the Book actually is, what it does. They are a nonprofit that is organized to help support authors, publishers, writers, illustrators, and just literature in Nebraska in general. That's their goal, is to just really make a platform for those, those specialties in literature to be highlighted and have support. So one of the reasons we like to do the Letters About Literature competition is just to encourage kids in Nebraska to be writing, to be reading, and to work their way. You know, you don't become an author just overnight. It's something you have to build to. And a lot of authors start when they're in school really finding their love of books and writing. So mm -hmm. that's that's one of the things we love about this. And the Center for the Book, there's Center for the Books in, um, is there one in every state or almost all? Yes. I know other states have them. Uh, yeah, we're we're affiliated with the Library of Congress um, and we're sort of like a branch of the Library of Congress in Nebraska is how they like to think of it, like their boots on the ground. And every state is different. I have found some states have completely separate center for the books that have zero kind of um, budget or funding. They're just totally run out of donations or some are out of their humanities council and are have grants that help run them. Um, we're really lucky to have our center for the book and our state library be kind of a, a joint effort in, in a sense that we have a totally separate board for the center for the book, but we also help with um, some logistical stuff here at the commission and we help sponsor a lot of the same activities. And then Sally, do you want to talk a little bit? So the, the program has changed a lot, letters about literature from its inception when it started as a Library of Congress writing contest. And then now it's a state contest. So each state has their own individual contest. When I first started with the letters about literature, the goal, well, each state had a winner in each group and that person was then in the competition for the national award. And Nebraska has had a national winner. Really? I can't remember who that was, it was before my time. We did. Uh, and it was so that was exciting. But um, it's all about, again, how did the, the book affect the child? And that's what they went for starting way back when. I can't remember when this 
program first started in the um, national uh, competition, but um, the being a judge for that time was a little harder because there were um, certain steps that had to be taken, understandably so, because they were protecting children's identities, which is important. So they they did that. And for a while, they had a portal that you, as a judge, I had to go mm -hmm. into and find the letters and find, and it was a little cumbersome. I call it, yeah. um, it worked, but it was kind of awkward to use. And then when they first, they finally said, we're not doing this anymore on a national level. Oh, that, well, that's too bad because this was something that any kid in the state could do if they wanted to, or if their teacher assigned it, which I don't know how many teachers. I don't know how many make it a, an assignment for a grade. I think several do it for extra credit for their students, though. So. I think that's a great idea, extra yeah. credit. And so I thought, well, now there's not going to be this anymore. And then I found out, no, Nebraska is going to have, have it. So thank you, Tessa, for being in charge. And I think you're kind of in <laughs> charge of some parts of it um, for us to still have this happening in Nebraska. And the as a judge, it's less cumbersome because it's, it's just Nebraska. We're still protecting kids' identities. We get the letters, and we keep them very secure because mm -hmm. uh, it used to be you didn't even know the child's name. Now I do believe the letters have the name on them. Yeah, but we don't say anything to anybody about um, who's submitted mm -hmm. the letter. That's all private. Yeah. And that, the other thing I really like about this is I do the, the grades four, uh, four to six, and it's not just me. Like I said, there's another person. I've worked with, I think, three different public librarians reading these, and I like having a public librarian viewpoint with my viewpoint at the state library. So we we each read the letters ourselves, and then we talk up usually on the phone. We used to, a couple of times we got together in person, but now we just talk on the phone, and we have already figured out what our opinions are, and then we talk about what is it about this letter and that letter that really seems to mm hit -hmm. the, 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 what we're going for with the contest. Yeah. And then um, we make some decisions and then turn that into Tessa. Yeah. Say, here's our winner and runner up. One thing that is much easier about it being a state run contest than a nationally run contest is that before students would submit their letters to this Library of Congress in DC, and so all the letters would go to DC and they would go through all the letters and basically filter them to make sure they met the criteria they wanted to meet. And then they would send back the ones they had pre-screened for us. So we didn't actually get to see all the letters submitted when it was a national contest. And now the letters come straight to us here at the Library Commission. We've got a, uh, they just, you submit them online and then I send them to the judges. So every letter gets read by the judges now. Um, we don't have anybody pre-screening them at the Library of Congress like we used to. That's another yeah. thing I like about it because yes, some, particularly with the younger group, the youngest group, some haven't really moved into the reflective writing yet. So this is good practice for them. And so you get some segments of a book report telling you this is what happened in the book, that's what happened to the book. Oh, and this part where this happened, that really made me think about this. So they thought mm -hmm. they have some book report aspects to it, and then they hit the more of the reflective thing that we're yeah. looking for. So, um, so possibly the Library of Congress reviewers may have been um, stricter than we are, at least with, I mean, if we had to wait for them to say the ones you're allowed to even judge on, we get to judge on anything that's been submitted. Yeah. The other thing I really like about this contest is that the, the child or teen chooses the book that they want to talk about. They're not, it's not just, well, here's this book, write some comments about it. Yeah. It's, they choose the book that, that said something to them and then talk about what it was that it, that they felt when they yeah. read that book. Mm -hmm. 
no, yeah, I agree. There's just a lot of autonomy for it of um, what kind of book you can pick. We've had people pick nonfiction, fiction, poetry, comic books, um, really any type of literature mm -hmm. can be something that you write about. Um, essays, it doesn't, doesn't have to be one specific thing. And we've had winners that have won after writing about all different kinds of books. So one, one year I thought was particular and particularly interesting. We had a boy win after reading a book about the periodic table and science and chemistry. And it, I don't think it was a textbook exactly, but it was, I just was like, I can't believe. Huh. Yeah. So surprised me, but so once you've gone through the whole process, we've gotten your letters, we've judged them. Um, there are some fun things that happen for, we have a winner and an alternate from each level. Um, and we invite them to a proclamation signing ceremony at the Capitol, usually with the governor, and they get a certificate signed by the governor. And then we go to Bennett Martin Public Library and we have a lunch and these students have the opportunity to read their letters if they would like to, their parents and teachers, and sometimes their siblings come as well. And so it's a really fun time just to, um, to get to hear the other winning letters and also share the letter that you wrote to win. And they get their prizes, which are a check for the Center for the Book, from the Center for the Book, and some a gift card to Francie and Finch and Chapters Bookstore. So both of those bookstores generously donate um, gift certificates to us for the winners. And then Richard Miller, who is another judge, always buys a notebook for the winners so they can keep on writing That's and journaling. Great. Yeah, so it's a really fun time. Um, and then we go down to the Nebraska Library, um, Jane Pope Geske Heritage Room of Nebraska Authors in Bennett Martin. And we have a little tour. That's actually what this picture on this slide of is. It's an old one, but we're in the Heritage Room. Students get a little overview of what the Heritage Room is. And it is, a collection of Nebraska literature and authors. And like, I think they have first edition Cather books in there. So they'll have like different editions of the same book by a Nebraska author. So you can see how that author or that book has maybe changed over the years and it's different publishing series, but it's a really interesting little specific gem in Lincoln City Libraries. And we get a chance to go in there and tour it and hear about the collection. And then students sign their letters and give them over to the librarian at the um, Heritage Room. And she files them away as Nebraska authors in their um, archives. So for a lot of our students that are winners, this is their first piece of work that they are authors of. And they're keeping it at the Heritage Room for posterity. That's that just is so cool, cool. yeah. yeah. So hopefully one day we'll have a, a student come back to say like, this is my, my first piece of work here at the Heritage Room. And here's my published novel. So how can librarians, teachers, um, parents be involved in this process? So librarians can partner with a classroom teacher, with an English teacher or a librarian at a public school to help um, work on this program, to have a writing clinic. Um, it promotes the library as a place to find books that make a difference. Um, you know, a lot of people see libraries as just places to consume media or to find a fun book to read, and I love it for that too, but they make it, those books make a difference, and so this is a great way to highlight that as well. We have a lot of materials on our Nebraska Center for the Book website that we'll go over that library users can use to help them with the project. One thing I think is fun, um, one library challenged adults and parents to write letters as examples for kids so that they could get an understanding of one, what a letter actually looked like, and two, get an, a better idea of what reflective writing is and how that can 
look at from an adult standpoint, but also from a child standpoint. So that's a really fun idea. Mentors from writing, if you have a local author, a local writing group, if you have a college class, um, have those people come in and help mentor students and learn about the writing process because outside of academic writing, a lot of students don't really have a chance to do any sort of writing other than a book report, other than an, you know, a history paper, those types of things. So learning how to, to write creatively is not something that just everybody's going to know how to do. Good point. Yeah. We've also had people host letter, letter writing clinics, and um, those are really fun. We have more information on the website that we'll show you. But it essentially, you have kids come in, you have them explore the library, explore the books. Um, you maybe go over some ideas they have of books that they want to write about and brainstorm, you know, help them brainstorm the books that they've read or make a list of the ones that are their favorites that they really felt spoke to them. And so that's one part of the writing clinic. The other part is then helping them write that letter and really get out of the book report era yeah. and into reflective writing. I can see that can be something difficult. I, I, cause I don't know, I don't remember from when I was in school, <laughs> um, when or if we got into that or if that was um, into reflective writing as part of, you know, creative writing class or whatever. Um, yeah. And especially for the younger ones, um, I wonder if that would be, that's something actually, some a comment that someone did have was that would be something definitely that would be something the public library could help with is that, um, writing workshops on reflective writing if the school hasn't done it yet for the kids or if it's mm -hmm. not part of that their curriculum at that particular school it's not something they get into or maybe it's once you get into um, electives or higher level I don't know um, they need someone to teach them how to do this the school hasn't and doing these clinics or reading it bringing in these you know authors or writers to help that from the library side that's a great way for the public library to get involved yeah All right, so how do you actually submit a letter after you've done all this work of, you know, maybe you've had a writing clinic, maybe you've partnered with your local class to, you know, write these letters. It's super easy. We've tried to make it as simple as we can for students and teachers and parents to go through this process. And um, we do have a couple of rules since we are submitting these online and not as physical letters. Uh, there is there's a law that children under the age of 13 can't submit things online without a parent's approval. So that is one, one thing. If your student is under the age of 13, as of October 1st this year, you have to, as a parent or guardian, consent for them to submit this letter to us. So it's really easy. You just have to check a box on the sign-in form. Mm -hmm. But that is, that is one thing to keep in mind for those lower levels. Definitely for the fourth graders, it can be in between there, whether they're over 13 yet. We also um, encourage you to keep a personal copy of your letter um, once you submit it so that, because we don't return your letter to you. So we wanna make sure you have a copy of that letter for other reasons. So you just have to go to this link. And I'm actually gonna show you if you go to the Nebraska Center for the Book Letters About Literature webpage, which is under programs, we have a handy big submit button. Um, we have, here's another link you can click that will take you to the submission platform. We also have some guidelines you can use that um, you could print out and hand out to students to help them work through those. The submission, just click submit. It tells you a little bit about what we're looking for. It needs to be between 400 to 800 words, so we don't need a, you know, 10-page letter, but we would like it to be more than just one tiny paragraph. It can be to any author, living or dead, from any genre, and we've already gone over what we want them to write about. One thing we would like you to do is have a header or footer at the top or bottom of your letter that has your the student's name, the school they go to, and then the grade they're in. 
And that's just in case after I've printed off all these letters for judges, I pick it up and I say, oh, this is from John Smith, but I have no idea if he's in level one or if he's in <laughs> level two or level three. So this just helps me keep things a little bit more organized in the uh, submission process. So that is one thing we ask. We also ask that you submit a PDF of your letter and not a Word document. So we need your school name, a school phone number, because we we do we want to we want to get in contact with an adult. We don't want a student's personal information. So with a school name and a school phone number, that um, allows us to contact a teacher or the school and not have a kid's personal information in our possession. Period. We do want your student's first and last name. We want your student's age. And here is if your student is under the age of 13, that we have your permission. We want to know what level of the contest they're going to be in. But then even inside that, we want to know what specific grade they are. And then here we want contact information for an adult. So we have teacher's name and teacher's email, but this could be a librarian. This could be a parent or a guardian. Um, so just if this child wins, what adult should we contact? Usually it's a teacher, but it just depends. We want to know the name of the author you're writing to and which book or title you are writing about. And then all you have to do is click here to upload your letter. And it's really easy. You just upload your level, your letter, your file to a Dropbox folder. And we would like your file titled the student's name and what level they're in. And then you just hit submit. We have a lot of great information here on this page. But we're going to go over. <laughs> The assessment portion, so that's really what Sally's here for, to talk about once we get a letter, what judges are specifically going through each of those letters and really looking for to find the winners. I Thank just want to you. jump in right here and let everyone know um, if you have any questions about the program um, or the process or anything you want to share, if you've done this at your library or school, um, go ahead and type in the questions section and I will um, grab them for um, Tessa and Sally. Go ahead, Sally. Thank you. And I like how this is very point pointed. This is what we're looking for. So who, who, who is it you're writing to? What author are you writing to? And the purpose of your letter. And again, that gets back to the how did this book teach you something about the world and make change your worldview? We do look at grammar, though we're not we're not marking corrective things on the letters, but we do look at grammar and I catch spelling because I can't help myself. It's okay. It doesn't lose you the winning if you're if you're if your ideas writing, are there. If your ideas are there, that's the most important thing in my opinion, and I hope I'm right about that. But we do look at grammar and we do look at spelling and also originality. Because if, if we've heard for years that some book or others been making impressions on people throughout the world, mm -hmm. and then the child writes the same thing, you're kind of going, well, I hope that that's really something you read and, and this is what be a result, but this isn't very original. Mm -hmm. Not that, again, I don't think that will make or break winning, but we look at all of these and see how did all of this come together in the letter? Mm -hmm. I think the letter as a whole is really the thing we're hoping for. And again, with the youngest group, uh, sometimes they get started kind of reciting what happened in the book, and then they kind of get into the reflective part, mm -hmm. and that makes a difference. Yeah. I think that's part of the audience as well. So if you're writing a letter to an author, you don't need to tell them about their book. They already know about their book. They wrote it. So, so, you know, it's just not necessary other than picking out the specific points of that book that you are talking about. So that's part of really thinking about the audience and 
not thinking about this as a book report. Um, we also have, yeah, about the grammar. I'm not a, I'm not a judge. I'm the paper person who organizes the, the, the letters for the judges. But I know our, our, our judges look at different things based on the level they're judging. So our level three judges, one is a college professor, um, one is Richard Miller, who is a former Nebraska Library Commission employee, but he is a stickler for grammar yeah. and yeah. spelling. So, so yep. you know, the level that we're looking for in level three is maybe different than level one, just because we know those students um, have had more time to write, have um, have a better grasp on those things. So it's maybe more important to level three than it is to level one. You know, there's a sliding scale, but so, so yes, I know those judges do care a lot about grammar and they might ding a letter if they didn't think it did, but, but yeah, they're, they're all different. And each letter that comes in is so unique that you really have to read each letter letter a few times, I'm guessing, yeah. before you can really judge it. I kind of, I shouldn't tell you my process. <laughs> I kind of set them on my desk. I know you've seen my desk, some of you. But, so there's the, and I'm gonna read them all, but I kind of put them by, uh, this is a good try, but not so, I'm not quite making it to, oh my goodness. I think these are contenders, mm -hmm. no good contender. And then I um, go back again, and things get shifted when I read it again. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stay in that. I'm not sure this. Yeah. When we hit the, because then I read it again, and I, I pick up on things that maybe I didn't catch the first time. And I think that's important too. Yeah. And I don't know if you're going to talk about your, your sheet here, but they do give us information to help guide us towards making decisions. What I like about this is here under grammatical conventions um, it says a weak letter would have multiple errors resulting in muddled meaning and i think that's the point that the meaning is muddled because they're not quite saying things properly then yes the whole letter is affected whereas if they use a a, a singular verb versus a, a verb of more yeah. than one person i'm not so concerned about yeah. that because they're I, I just see them as riding right along and getting excited and writing. <laughs> you don't forget to, to mm -hmm. use the right version of the words. But, and yeah, so we, I give each judge a scoring rubric kind of so that they can keep um, a consistency throughout reading the letters and being able to judge them because they are so different to each child and each book is different. So one is format and audience where we just want to know, like we talked about, one is purpose and reflection, one is writer's voice and use of language, and the other is grammatical conventions. So they they are looking for these specific things, but there's, you know, a, a different scale about where a kid might land. So maybe your your format and your audience and your purpose and reflection are way up there and they're high, but maybe you were a little lower on your grammar, that's not going to, it's a, a curve. Right. They're grading on a curve, not just a X, X, X. And I like the fact that you were talking about the, the workshops where you're talking about what is a letter? What should a letter look like? Because um, one of the things on here is under format and audience is it's weak if it's not in a letter format. If they just do bullet points, for example, yeah. which are interesting, but it's not a letter. And so that that um, takes it down a notch or something. Mm -hmm. uh, we Sally mentioned this before, but it's not just one person reading the the letters for each level. We have two different judges for level one, level two, and level three, and we send each of them the letters individually so they can read them and have a chance to absorb them, like Sally said, and come back to them and read them again. And then they come together and yeah, they talk about which ones they felt were the top runners. And then maybe they talk about those top five or three letters that they just really loved. Maybe they each have different top three, but you guys eventually come to some sort of consensus, I assume. 
Yes, we do. And uh, some of the time we're almost identical in the things that we've chosen. And other times they're, like you said, completely different letters. And then mm -hmm. that really opens my eyes because I'm one person and it's a completely different person. And, and they see, saw things that I didn't see in yeah. a letter. And I begin to say, well, yeah, you're right. You really did it this reflective that I wasn't picking up on. And, and um, then we read them again and then we talk again. Because we don't, when we're almost exactly the same, then we might make a decision that same phone call. But we don't rush it because this is important. These kids work hard on these letters. And I don't just read them and say, well, yeah, you're the winner. No, they deserve a lot of consideration. So then we'll call back and say, you know, I read that letter, like you said, and I'm moving that up to my top choice now. And mm -hmm. they might say, well, it's still my top choice. So we're, we're happy. Yeah. But, and there are two, like, like we said, there are two letters picked from each level each year. So we've got a winner and then we've also got, um, a runner-up, essentially. So we pick the two top letters. So we've talked a lot about reflective writing, um, and I thought it would be a great idea to go a little bit deeper into what is reflective writing, what that actually means. And you can read this slide, but it is it is really jumping out of like an academic paper into getting into your personal experiences and observations and thinking about how that shapes both your thoughts and your life and your actions and how you think about new ideas and how you process things. And it really does require students to tap into something different to express their own opinion and not, I had a high school teacher that would say memorization, regurgitation, like we weren't thinking any new thoughts, we weren't, forming our own opinions about anything. We were just memorizing the stuff they gave us and, and just giving it back to them, um, which has its place in things like biology, <laughs> but multiplication, <laughs> tables. multiplication tables. But you know, a lot of learning is being able to wrap your head around something and then think about it beyond what your teachers have taught you about it. So this is helping kids step into that place. There was a letter a few years ago, so I can't remember the book or the who won, but the letter was about something that had happened in that book, which prompted the student to say things that something had happened to their uncle that was similar to what happened in the book. And they got to really talking about that brought out a whole lot of understanding to the, for the, read, the child that um, these things happened sometimes and, and what had happened to their uncle was hard for him and they began to understand why their uncle had some trouble that he got past but they had not realized before mm -hmm. how hard it was for their uncle till they read that book and something like that really great to just kind of you know get, get a little yeah we have we have students that write incredibly deep meaningful letters yeah. and and we are very conscious that some of them are essentially spilling their guts to us in these letters. So we're very careful with them. We don't, we know, we don't give them out. We only publish them if we have the student's permission afterwards. And mm -hmm. we only, students don't even have, the winners don't even have to read their letters at the award ceremony if they don't want to. It's not something we make them do. Right. So if their letter is too personal or private, they, they can totally choose not to do that. Um, it's awesome that you're so respectful room. of that. Yeah, that's yeah. very important, I think, yeah. And the Heritage Room isn't, um, you know, publishing these letters either. They're just on file um, for posterity. But um, yeah, we're, we're really careful about it so that the things that these students talk about can be as private or as public as the day would like them to be, essentially. Yeah. Um, so I think we've gone into this a little bit. Um, I don't know, I think it's really interesting to hear the level ones read their winning letters and the level twos and level threes and just see how students have progressed in this 
reflective writing. Um, Cause yeah, it's always really shocking to see how deeply these students are thinking about these things. But yeah. Um, we have a question about the letters, which I want to make sure I get in here. Um, not about how to write yeah. them, but um, it's interesting. I don't think we've ever had anyone ask this before. Have and I know you said that the identity is you know kept as private as possible, but um, have you ever seen um, a one of the children do something at a lower level and then submit a letter a letter a letter again a few years later at the higher level? Like you may recognize a name in a school that goes together, a name in a library or something. Is this something yeah, that they've done more than once since they've um, you know grown up? Yeah. We've actually had, we've had a student, we've had the same student win in a couple different levels actually, as they continue to, to grow and read. And I don't know if, I can't remember if they won one year and then got an alternate the next year, if they got it, or if they had alternate the first year and won the next year. But, but yeah, we definitely have students that continue to write these in the different levels as they're going through school, um, especially if it's a program in their community and not just a part of a classroom program, because obviously if it's, you know, just your sixth grade teacher is asking you to write these letters, it might not be something you do later, but other teachers might not. Yeah, yeah, you never yeah. Yeah. It might not be something at every every level. Exactly. But we have we've had students that have written in multiple years and levels and I love that. Yeah. yeah. So so continue to nice participate. To see come back. Yeah, I'm sure and say, oh, Definitely. I remember this kid. He was they were great. <laughs> and then I think the other thing is, and I guess I can't I don't know this 100 percent because I don't have a, the letters in front of me, but I don't think they write about the same book. I think they pick new books. Oh, probably. To, yeah. write about and they read something you know, they, yeah. they've read something different as or they go back and they read something they read before but it has a whole new meaning for them at this new age or with new sure. life experiences so mm -hmm. definitely yeah look at it with new eyes yeah absolutely yeah and it has an effect on my to be read pile in my office because <laughs> there'll be books that they write about that I haven't read. I know it's shocking that there are some books I haven't read. <laughs> it's grades four through six. And I go, you know, this is quite a profound letter and I've never read this book. Mm -hmm. That doesn't have, have anything to do with the letter. That has to do with me. And I say, I have to go read this book now because, <laughs> wow, I have to see what I think of the book too. Yeah. yeah. There's so just so many this. books that are published. It's impossible for anyone to read them all. You're good, Sal. You're good. True. True enough. True enough. It's your goal, though. It is. <laughs> I should at least hear about them all, and I don't. <laughs> um, this is a part of our writing guide that we have. We let students on. Oh, it's on our our guidelines. We have up on the website that teachers or librarians, anyone can print out and give to students or use in their library or classroom. So it just gives a quick overview of what the contest is and what we're looking for, um, and then how you submit your book, your letter. I don't think we have time for it. We do have, um, we have a letter that we had recorded one year, but maybe we can go back to that in a little bit. We only have a we have less than 10 minutes left. Right, yeah, people can go look at those online. That's just something to know that there are yeah. um, posted out there if you wanted to see. Um, we did the virtual, of course, awards. Um, so we didn't put a pause. We did not skip this even when the pandemic started, correct? Just went virtual for the awards? We did. We did have one year. We, okay. I think it was the first year we did not do the contest just because. We were still trying to figure everything out. Well, each one, yeah, of course. And, yeah. yeah. Libraries were closed and such. Yeah. Um, but the next year when we did it, we still couldn't have they were no they were not having um in-person um proclamations and yeah. right. so we we just aired on the side of safety and had a virtual celebration and the link for that is down here is our 2020 letters about literature virtual awards 
And so we have videos of the children reading their letters. They're mm -hmm. really great. If you get a chance, go in and watch that. We also have some past winners from 2016, which was a, a little bit ago. Um, they read their letters for NET radios all about books. And so we have a recording of them reading their letters. It's not a video, but it's still just as good. There's a lot of great stuff on here. We, this is last year's Encompass Live. We'll put a link up to the new Encompass Live as soon as Krista publishes that. <laughs> that should be by tomorrow. You should have that all yeah. ready. There's um, a, a really great reflective writing assessment um, from the National Letters About Literature that was put out at one point that does go through reflective writing very nicely and is a great curriculum guide almost if that is something a teacher or a librarian would be interested in going into. But here is the guidelines I talked about. So this is just a PDF that's got all the information on it. It's got information about entry, about judging, um, the assessment of what the judges are looking for so students can have that on hand. Yeah, do we have any other questions, Krista, or anything you guys want to ask us before we run out of time? Um, let's see, I didn't see anything come in yet. Um, does anybody have any questions? Any questions, comments, thoughts? Uh, you can type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. I know it says that the um, Nebraska Center for the Book finds the judges and asks the judges, if someone was interested in being a judge, should they contact anyone? Yeah, There's a librarian that's who a would like to see. You that's know. a good question. Yeah, if you are interested in being a judge or just getting some more information about the the program, you can definitely contact me. My information's right here. You can send me an email and maybe let me know if you are interested in judging which level you would be more interested in judging. We have had years where we've struggle to find judges for different levels just because somebody you know how dare they choose to retire from being a judge <laughs> how would anybody retire from being a judge i don't know um but yeah it it is it's not it is occasionally a lot of work i mean you get you might have 30 40 letters sometimes that you're reading so yeah and you're it's, trying to give them all an equal opportunity to be considered so yeah. you take time to read them and think about them and then shuffle and read them mm -hmm. again and but yeah. it's sure worth it but it's a really fun program to be a part of yes. so if you're interested let us know all right well i don't see any new desperate questions or comments thing that came in while we were chatting so i think we could work on wrapping things up um almost on time i love that <laughs> <laughs> um, so um thank you Tessa and um Sally this is we love this program that's why we kept going even after the Library of Congress no longer did the national one and I know other states did as well um so if you're not from Nebraska and you're interested in this we got just some thank yous coming through you're welcome Tony <laughs> um that you know the, the stuff doing the national one and others there was a little bit of a um Confusion, a little panic at first, I know, <laughs> when that happened. But uh, many other states have also taken on and said, you know what, it's a great program. We love it. The the children love it. Let's just figure out a way to do it um, and keep it going. Um, and I'm glad, mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that you get so many submissions, too, because I always wonder. I never knew, like, how many. Is this a huge thing? 40-something letters. Wow. That's that's a lot. And I'm sure other states with uh, more, you know, more population than Nebraska probably have more. <laughs> probably. probably, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it changes from year to year. Yeah. Sometimes there's there's 20, sometimes there's 30. You just don't know. So yeah. prepare to read. And yeah. I love to read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm I think the more letters the better. I mean, there's there's no limit on how many letters we would accept. So sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
All right. You awesome. know, Sally, I might have a hard time reading too many. But <laughs> I might hand half of them to Tess and say, here, read these. This and is your turn now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You, if you wanted to, you could certainly read them. All right. All right. I think I will, yeah, we'll get things, do a little, my little wrap up here. So thank you so much, Tess and Sally. This is great. Um, got good information out for this year. Like I said, we'll get the recording up and ready uh, by tomorrow. I'm going to pull presenter control to my screen here to do my little wrap up. Is it up? There it is, finally. Uh, so yes, this is the um, event page for today's show. We pop back to the Encompass Live page. If you just type Encompass Live into your search engine of choice, it is the only thing called that on the internet. No one's allowed to use that name. <laughs> and you'll come up with our main page or our archive page. Uh, main page here's our upcoming shows um for the rest of this year and even into january <laughs> um, yeah well but our archives are right here most recent one at the top of the page today's will be there um everyone who um like i said to be ready by tomorrow um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's available i'll send that link to you too as well tessa so you can um get it up on the Letters about literature webpage. Um, and also, if you send me um, your slides, we'll get those linked out as well for people to have. Um, there is a search feature here if you want to search our show archive, see if we've done something, anything else um, on the show. And um, I will let you know here you can either search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months. And that is because this is our full show archives. And I'm not going to scroll all the way to the bottom because it goes back to the bottom. Going back to 2000 January 2009 was when Encompass Live first premiered. We're 15 years old this year. <laughs> so yeah, and still going. Yeah, um, <laughs> get it through the pandemic, and we're still going. Um, but do pay attention to the original broadcast date if you do watch any of our recordings. Um, many of the shows will be great and stand the test of time. It's be good, valid re information, but things are going to get old. Resources are going to change drastically or no longer exist anymore. Um, links may be broken. People will probably work at different libraries than they worked at possibly when they presented for us 10 years ago. So just keep an eye on that date if you do watch any of our really older shows. Um, we do have a Facebook page if you like to use Facebook. You can give us a like over there, like, like, <laughs> um, and you get reminders about things going on. Here's your reminder to log into today's show um, or when the recordings are available, information about our presenters. We always post on here. So do, um, if you like, give us a like over there or on Twitter and Instagram, we use the NCOMP live hashtag. So you can keep an eye on what we're doing there. Um, if you're in Nebraska, sign up for our regular old mailing list here at the Library Commission and through our regional library systems. And I push out everything on there. So that wraps it up for today. Um, uh, as I said, here's our schedule. Got almost everything filled in here. Um, some of these empty dates, I do, I'm do. i just waiting for confirmation and final descriptions of things from varying um, presenters. And you'll see we do have Sally's regular, and while Sally's here, I'll mention her regular end of the year sessions are scheduled, her best new children's books of 23. Um, summer reading program for next year, 2024, and best new teen reads of 2023. So if you always look at Sally's uh, shows for that at the end of the year, they're all scheduled and you can sign up for those. Next week, we'll be talking about Web Junction. Uh, Kendra Morgan, who's the program director at Web Junction, uh, will be with us. This is a great online website, been around for, uh, I don't know, long, long time <laughs> with great um, uh, professional development and education um, resources and training and workshops and webinars and articles and all sorts of things uh, for librarians. So if you're a librarian and looking for um, something like that, sign up for next week's show and join us for that. Other than that, thank you everybody for being here. Thanks Tessa and Sally and hope we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh.